Peplinx Fusion Hub Virtual Appliance is much like a virtual router. It's used as an alternative to running Speed Fusion on router hardware. It's also an alternative to Peplinx Speed Fusion Cloud Service, which we covered in an earlier video with the Surf Soho MK3. It's important to note that unlike a hardware only Speed Fusion connection, a public IP address is not needed. This is because a public IP address can be supplied from the cloud service running the Fusion Hub appliance. Of the supported cloud services, Amazon Web Services seems to be the most popular, so we're going to show you how to set that up. Be aware that we won't be covering the Speed Fusion configuration in this video. For those instructions, please check out our Speed Fusion video for configuring through in Control 2 or the three Speed Fusion videos covering hot failover, WAN smoothing, or bonding configurations. At this point, you'll need to set up your Amazon account if you have not done so already. When you go through the setup, most users will select the root user login. Also, when prompted to select a support plan, any should do, but we'll be using the free option for this demonstration. Before we begin, we want to cover some details about the different Fusion Hub options as well. Fusion Hub Solo is the only free option as this is limited to one peer-to-peer -peer connection. If you require multiple devices connected, this is where you will need to purchase a Fusion Hub license. The license options will start with one that supports up to five peers, and they'll increase from there. Whether you purchase a Fusion Hub license for multiple peers or opt for the solo license, you will need to start at the InControl2 webpage. Log in and navigate to the organization in which the device or group of devices you need to configure are located. All devices must be saved within the same group. In our case, we're going to set up a single point-to-point -point connection from our Pepwave Max BR1 to a Fusion Hub solo appliance. If you have a multiple peer license, you'll need to add its serial number to your InControl account before this step. When you're ready, go to the Organization Settings section and click on Warranty and License. Once here, scroll down to the Fusion Hub Licenses section. At the bottom of this table of devices, you'll find the Acquire Fusion Hub License button. When you click this, you'll see your multi-peer license along with the solo license. We'll select Solo, then click Acquire. Select a group to add this Fusion Hub appliance. It should be the same group that the other device or devices you'll be connecting to are located. Click Process. Edit the device name and or the location if needed. Click Add at the bottom when done. Then click Close. The system will display the license key and serial number of any Fusion Hub solo licenses. Now that ours is created, we'll be redirected to the dashboard page of the group we added it to. Until we create our Amazon connection, the Fusion Hub will display an offline status. Next, move back to the Warranty and License page under Organization Settings. Again, Refer to the Fusion Hub Licenses section. Click on the link, Subscribe to Fusion Hub on AWS Marketplace. This should open up a new tab or window in your web browser. If not, make sure your browser is not blocking pop-ups from this page. You may be prompted to log into your Amazon Web Services account at this time. As you can see at the top right corner, we're already logged in. The first page will show a review of the Amazon connection, including a place where you can calculate monthly costs. Scroll to the top and click the Continue to Subscribe button. Review the terms and conditions, then click Accept Terms. For the next few moments, Amazon system will process the subscription. We'll see Pending displayed here while it's working. Once you see the effective date, the Continue to Configuration button should illuminate. After clicking this button, we'll choose a region. The other settings should be left as shown. The region is the location from which the Amazon connection is operating. You'll want to select the closest location to where you'll be using your Peplink hardware. The further the distance between the locations, the more latency it can add to the VPN connection. When you're done here, click the Continue to Launch button at the top right. Once you're at the Launch This Software page, refer to Choose Action and change it to Launch Through EC2. Click the Launch button at the bottom right to continue. Now at Step 2, you'll choose an instance type. This is a virtual server and options differ based on CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity. All options that are compatible with our account can be selected by checking the box to the left of the name. The T3 Nano is selected by default. We're going to change that to T3 Medium as recommended by Peplink. Choose the best fit for your needs now, but with room to grow as this cannot be changed after completion. Click Review and Launch at the bottom right to continue. The review page is exactly that. It's an overview of the instance details. While you have the option to adjust settings, such as security groups, which are like port forwarding rules, it is unnecessary. 
After you're done checking your configuration, scroll to the bottom right and click Launch. You'll be prompted to set up a key pair next. This is much like a password that can be applied to the instance. We're going to skip that by selecting the option to proceed without a key pair. We'll acknowledge this selection, then click Launch Instances. The page will update and display the steps it takes to complete the connection to the server. Eventually, you'll see a new page that shows the launch status. There's some helpful information available here, like viewing usage and creating billing alerts. We're going to move right ahead to view our instance by clicking the button at the bottom. The instance page will show a list of any you have created. As you can see here, ours shows that it's currently running, so we know it has been configured properly. We still need to link this to the Fusion Hub appliance however so let's click on the instance name. From here, we can copy its public IPv4 address, which is going to take us to its administration page. This is the same as your peplink or pepwave router's web admin page. Initially, since the page is using HTTPS, it may alert you that the page is not trusted. We're using the Google Chrome browser, but whichever browser you have, look for where it might allow you to proceed to the web page. Enter admin for the username, all lowercase letters. For the password, we need to move back to the Amazon instance page. Copy its instance ID at the top left. Then, move back to the Fusion Hub login page. We'll paste the password here and click login. Immediately, we're prompted with the setup wizard. This will provide the Fusion Hub its basic configuration. Enter a unique identifier for the Fusion Hub to use as its local ID. Note that the local ID must be between 3 and 14 characters without spaces. Click Next to continue. Select the desired time zone as this will apply to the Fusion Hub event log. Click Save and apply settings. The final step is to add the license key provided by Peplink. This is found at the In Control 2 page under Organization Settings and Warranty and License. Click Submit to finish the initial setup. A verification process occurs next and will take about 30 seconds to complete. The Fusion Hub appliance will then reboot itself. After the reboot, you'll be redirected to the login page. Let's go ahead and see what the admin page looks like now. We can see our WAN IP address from Amazon and details about the Fusion Hub. Its firmware is out of date so we want to get that upgraded. Just like a router, you can go under the system, firmware page here and use the check for firmware option. You can also do this from the In Control 2 page under the Settings tab at the Device Details page. Select Firmware Management. Select the newest firmware to upgrade to. Currently, that is 8.1.1. We want to upgrade immediately rather than schedule it. Save changes and we'll wait a few minutes for that to complete. Now that the firmware has been updated, let's take a quick look at an alternate login method for the Fusion Hub. At the Device Details page at In Control 2, we'll click on the Settings tab at the top and select Remove Web Admin. A new page opens to the dashboard page of the Fusion Hub. If you prefer to configure Speed Fusion at the Web Admin page, you'll find this under the Network tab. Speed Fusion will be listed on the left. You'll notice the local ID we configured through the setup wizard earlier. Just click New Profile and you can proceed from there. For those instructions, check out our other Speed Fusion videos linked in the description. You can also configure through in Control 2. Keep in mind that configuration can only be done through the web administration or in Control 2. You cannot use both simultaneously. To begin the in Control configuration, start at the Group Dashboard page where your devices are located. Go to the top of the page and hover over the PET VPN Speed Fusion tab. Select Configuration. Check the Enabled box next. Then scroll to the bottom of the page and click Save Changes. You should see an alert appear at the top left that says Saved Successfully. From this point, the configuration is no different than creating a Speed Fusion connection between two routers. For those instructions, please check out our Speed Fusion video for configuring through in Control 2. We'll have that listed in the description as well.